Update. Cousin, 20 female, who lives with my wife, 34 female, and I, 34 male, disappeared, and told her sister, 33 female, that I tried to shoot my shot with her. I didn't. We are confused and worried about her. Original post. This is slightly long but I think it's helpful to give the background to understand the current situation. Two years ago, my cousin Bex got into a college that is close to where my wife and I live. Due to COVID, she had the option to be virtual, which she chose during her freshman year, but last year she was in person. After doing virtual her first year, Bex felt anxiety about finding a roommate and living in the dorms. My wife and I told her that we would be happy to have her live with us. The arrangement worked out really well for all parties. Due to the age difference, I was always closer to Bex's older brother and sisters, one of them being Tori, who comes up later. It was nice to get to know Bex better. She's smart, with a sharp wit and great with our kids, five male and three female, who have loved having Aunt Bex around. She became part of our family, joining us for meals, family time, trips, errands, and so on. We let her know early on that she could either do family stuff with us or not. If she just wants to use our house as a place to sleep, that's fine. She has chosen to be active with us. Having Bex with us has been good for Rach and I as well. Bex has always been willing to babysit the kids, letting us get out for date nights and such. The arrangement from the beginning is that Bex doesn't pay an official rent. Instead, her parents give Rach and I $400 a month to help cover stuff like food and utilities. When Bex watches the kids, we always pay her well, and this is important later. The living situation was going well enough that Bex asked if she could live here over the summer while she continued her job, which we all agreed to. Last winter, Bex started bringing Will around. They met through some mutual friends and eventually started dating. He was a bit standoffish at first when we interacted, but he eventually learned that I had been roped into a March Madness bracket pool where I was in over my head and Bex had asked Will to help me a bit. He is really into stuff like sports betting and daily fantasy and helped me a lot. We definitely weren't friends, but I tried to be nice and welcoming to him. At the same time, I wasn't always crazy with how he treated Bex. He would nag her a lot about her body and her intelligence, which is crazy because she's a decent looking and smart girl. This happened enough and got under Rach in my skin enough that Rach eventually called him out on it one time when he made a comment at a family gathering. Additionally, Bex would often make comments about how if she went out with friends, he would constantly be texting her and trying to get her to leave her friends and hang out with him. I also didn't like that he seemed to not really have any ambition in life. He didn't work, lived in an apartment paid for by his parents, and spent all of his time betting on sports and gaming. Now don't get me wrong, I love video games, but he would always tell people that he's making it as a professional gamer when his Twitch stream had maybe 15 people on it max. A little under a week ago, I was away for business for a night, but Rach texted me that Bex came home upset, saying that Will broke up with her. After the kids went down, Rach says she stayed up with Bex caring for her, watching old TV shows and drinking wine. I get home the next day and that night after dinner, Bex starts telling us what happened, how Will broke up with her out of nowhere. Both Rach and I say the same things to Bex, that he's stupid, he isn't going anywhere in life, we don't really like him, and he didn't treat her well. All the stuff that you say when someone you care about gets broken up with and you didn't really like the ex. I thought that the conclusion at the end of the night, that while the situation was hard, the timing allowed for a fresh start with the fall and new classes starting. The next day, when Rach and I get home from work, Bex isn't home. She often goes out with friends or does her own thing so we didn't really think too much about it. It was weird when she didn't come home overnight though. The next morning, Rach texts her, didn't see you come home last night, just wanted to make sure you're okay. By that night, Bex still hadn't responded and didn't come home. We started to get worried. We called straight to voicemail. She didn't come home the next night and we started to really worry. We called and texted a few more times. The third night of Bex being gone, Tori, Bex's sister who I've always been close to, FaceTimes me. Without any greeting, she tells me she wants my side of the story. Confused, I asked her what she was talking about. She tells me that she had been texting Bex earlier in the day, and Bex told Tori about how I had tried to shoot my shot with her. After being really confused, Tori came out with Bex's story of what happened. Will had broken up with Bex over a misunderstanding. Instead of being there for her, I had lectured Bex about how terrible of a person Will is. Bex goes and talks to Will the next day. Will tells Bex that we only asked Bex to live with us so that we would have a live-in nanny who we could stick our kids with. Will tells Bex that I was probably shooting my shot with her and that she shouldn't come back to our house or else I will try to manipulate her into never seeing him or any of her friends again. Now let me be clear. I did not, nor would I ever, shoot my shot with Bex. My wife Rach was present for the entire conversation with Bex about Will. Rach and I have a strong marriage and partnership. 
This isn't just a we have a great intimate life kind of thing. We are strongly connected by shared life and goals, strong trust and communication, healthy intimate life, committed to each other and our family. Sure we have our issues, but we have a strong marriage, and I have no desire to blow up my family or my life by shooting my shot with anyone, much less my cousin. Additionally, when we asked Bex to live with us, her babysitting was not part of the arrangement. We paid her well and always asked her, never assuming she would babysit. We hired other babysitters a number of times when Bex wasn't able or interested in caring for the kids. To illustrate, we hired a sitter once when Bex was working on a major project. She was in the house working in her room, but we hired a sitter so she knew that she could just focus on schoolwork in her room, instead of trying to do that and watch the kids for a few hours. Today is the seventh day Bex has been gone. She has been talking to Tori, who is barely talking to us, so we think that means she's physically okay. But Rach and I are obviously still worried about her. We think that Will is manipulative and sketchy. We also have so other issues we are concerned about. Bex is taking classes that just started up this week. After Tori called and we got the story, Rach decided to enter Bex's room for some clues about where she went and saw that her backpack with her school stuff was still there. Unless she went without her stuff, this means that she has missed this whole week of classes. All of Bex's stuff is still here, it's not like she suddenly moved her things out. I am sure that she wants like her clothes, jewelry, personal items, and so on. I'm nervous we will just show up at our house to collect those things. It's not like she's a renter where there's a lease and we can evict her or anything. Rach and I were supposed to go away next week for a long weekend for our anniversary where Bex was supposed to be staying with the kids. Obviously, we can't count on her to do that. The other issue is that three weeks ago, after she agreed to the plan, her laptop fell and broke the screen. We fronted her the money for taking care of the kids and paid $400 of what we were going to pay her to get her laptop fixed. How do we get that back, short of taking her to court? Her parents are convinced that Bex will come home any minute and that she will do the babysitting and say they want us to be patient. We are confused by what she is doing and feel unconvinced that she'll pay us back. Just generally, I would really appreciate any advice on where to go from here. What do I say to family who heard that I came on to my cousin? Is there any repairing things with Bex? Now for the top advice before reading the update. Has Tori actually seen Bex since she left? Or are they talking exclusively through text? She disappears immediately after a nasty breakup with a sketchy partner, and the story as to why makes zero sense. Yup, I'm calling the cops. OP please see this. I never even thought about this possibility until I read your comment. Now I'm freaked out. I hope she's okay. That was literally my first thought. The first sentence on Will read like a true crime story on YouTube. I saw more red flags on him as the story progressed. Please confirm that they've spoken on the phone or FaceTimed. The fact that she texted her sister all of this is really concerning. The fact that she didn't bring anything with her is really really concerning. The fact no one has called the cops for a wellness check is incredibly concerning. Has anyone even confirmed that she is actually at this dude's house? The dude that randomly dumped her for no reason. How are people not freaking out more about this? Yeah, this is absolutely terrifying. And now for the update. First let me say. Bex is safe now, but it was a scary ordeal. Thanks for everyone who responded and gave me a wake-up call in the last post. Bex has a habit of going out with friends and staying the night, plus she sometimes isn't the best texter, so I honestly didn't realize how serious the whole thing was until all of your comments started rolling in. Honestly, I was in shock at first with the comments. Even writing it out didn't help me see the danger that she was in. It was only after the comments started coming in and I went back and reread what I wrote that I actually saw how crazy the whole story was and how shockingly cavalier I was being about the whole thing. I'm embarrassed by my original post. When I made the post, I was embarrassingly focused on myself, my needs, my image, and what people would think of me. My selfishness didn't let me see the bigger issue of Bex's safety. The comments helped me to realize that I needed to do more to make sure Bex was safe. The first thing I did was call Tori and see if she had talked to Bex. She said she had, but it had been two days. I shared some of the fears I had about a harmful relationship, and I could tell that Tori was still having a hard time deciding who to believe. Despite this, she reached out, and Bex's phone went straight to voicemail. This went on for a full day of calls. Tori and I decided to call the police and request a wellness check on Bex at Will's place. The cops tried with no answer at the door, but a neighbor of Will's told the cops she had seen them packing Will's car and had not seen them for a few days. A missing persons report was created. Two weeks after Bex's disappearance, her sister Tori called me. She told me that Bex was safe at her house and apologized for what she had said to me on the call right after Bex left. 
She explained that there was a whole story and that she'd like to come over with Bex the next day to speak to Rach and I. The next day, Tori and Bex drive down to our place. We all sat and eventually, and Bex comes out with the story. It's long and a bit confusing. I'm not sure if we'll ever know the full story but here are the main bullet points from Bex. Will had gotten jealous that Bex was meeting up with some friends and broke up with her. He immediately started blowing up her phone, but she ignored him the day Rach and I had talked to Bex. She went over to his place the next day to get her stuff and tell him off, but he started crying, said he was sorry, and that he had this big romantic surprise for her. He wanted to take her to the Grand Canyon. Bex has always wanted to go and talks about it regularly. She decides to give Will a second chance and hops in the car with him. They swing by our house while my wife and I were at work so she can pack some things, and then they start driving. On day two of their romantic getaway, she talks to her sister Tori that she was back together with Will, and that it had all been a misunderstanding. She suggested that they were at Will's place, not saying that they were multiple states away. They pull into a hotel in Arizona. Bex goes and showers. While in the bathroom, Will took her phone and texted Tori all the stuff about how manipulative Rach and I are and how I tried to sleep with her. Bex comes out of the bathroom, sees Will holding her phone and questions him. They fight and he throws her phone which breaks the screen so that it is all black. It's why no one has heard from her. He immediately apologizes and says he loves her and wants to spend his life with her, and she believes breaking the phone was an accident. They spend a couple of days hiking around the Grand Canyon. Bex asks Will a few times what the plans are for going home, but he is cagey about it. After two days there, she says she needs to get back home for school and demands that they leave the next day. Will tells Bex that the whole trip is a surprise, that they are going to be living in Arizona now. I guess in Will's head they were going to start looking for an apartment. I'm really confused by this part of the story, but it seems like Will thought they were going out there to start a new life together, just the two of them. I'm not sure what he thought was going to happen to all their stuff back at home, but he legitimately thought he could surprise someone by deciding by himself that they would move halfway across the country. Super crazy. This surprise starts a huge fight. At one point in the fight, he pushes her and she slams into the wall. He immediately goes into apologizing mode. Bex says at this point it was like the scales fell off her eyes, and she saw the cycle of control, abuse, and apologizing. She pretended to calm down and forgive him so that he would calm down. A few hours later, once Will had calmed, she said she was going to shower and asked him to run out and grab them some food. As soon as he was gone, she grabbed her stuff and went to the front desk. They were on their game enough to call her a car that met her behind the building, which she took to the Verizon store. Verizon was able to get her a new phone which she used to immediately call Tori and explain what happened, then she bought a plane ticket and flew home. It's clear that this whole ordeal has weighed on her a lot. She spoke about being terrified of Will, feeling like he had kidnapped her and was holding her hostage. I've read what I wrote in the initial post a few times and have felt really stupid. The commenters were so quick to see the danger Bex was in and the abusive cycles. While I was dismissive, I guess I thought that a sketchy partner would seem more evil or angry. I thought I would be able to see it from a mile away. I just thought that Will was just a prick. Yet in hindsight, I now see how emotionally and verbally horrible he was to Bex before my very eyes. Rach and I both feel like we let her down by not seeing it. We should have been the ones questioning his actions from the beginning. Some comments and DMs told me that I couldn't trust Bex to be around my kids ever again, that she was dangerous, too vulnerable and lacked judgment. But if this was the case, I shouldn't be trusted around them either, since I didn't have the wisdom to say anything either. This update is getting long so to wrap it up, here's how things stand now. Bex's parents drove in, and Bex stayed with them in their hotel room this last week. They were really kind to her, and I think they feel as bad as Rach and I for not realizing the danger that their daughter was in earlier. They found Bex a therapist in our area who specializes in trauma and whatnot. Bex has been going regularly. Bex went with her dad to cancel the missing persons report and file a police report about the incident. We found out that Will has a warrant for some petty theft. Rach and I aren't surprised. Bex was able to give the cops his last address at the hotel, but we have no idea what has happened there. We keep googling his name to see if a news story come up, but there's been nothing yet. Bex's parents left yesterday. We all sat down before they left and decided that Bex will move back in with us. She has been able to pick up late with her classes this semester. She's fragile, but I hope the warmth and routine of family life will provide some comfort and security. This whole thing has convinced my wife to let me pull the trigger on some security cameras. I installed them and a video doorbell. Our neighbor is a cop and we told him what was going on. He has been kind enough to park his cruiser on the street in front of our house to be a visual in case Will tries to come around. Thanks again for everyone who commented and helped on my last post.
Your comments were instrumental in helping us see the situation in a new light. Well, considering some of the stories of possessive boyfriends unaliving their girlfriends, I think OP's cousin might have emerged from this pretty lucky. Yes, as an aside, I would never go to the Grand Canyon with a jilted lover. Or anywhere remote and dangerous. I was so convinced he was going to try to end her. I'm not convinced that he wasn't still going to try to end her. Even if she'd been perfectly amenable to living there with him at the drop of a hat, at some point she'd have done or said some innocuous thing that would probably have flipped the switch in his brain. He thought he could surprise her with a move to another state without any of their things while she was enrolled in school. That's a delusional level of crazy. Glad that Bex is safe. Did her ex really suggest her cousin was hitting on her? And her sister believed it. Is this Game of Thrones? Her sister believed it from only a text too. Yeah, no wonder OP was focused on themselves and didn't realize the danger to Bex. His own family was accusing him of being a predator. I'm glad he's learned to think outside of himself a bit more, but I'm surprised older cousin seemed to have zero idea about the reality of her sister living with her cousin. It's possible it was just a knee-jerk reaction. If my younger sister texted me and said an older male cousin made a pass at her, my first instinct would be to protect my sister, not to insinuate that she was lying or demand a FaceTime call. Obviously, I would have follow-up questions, especially if I had thought the cousin was a decent guy. I'm guessing Tori also had questions, but that Bex not responding immediately wasn't a red flag because she was an infrequent texter. If OP sees this, they need to change the locks on doors and make sure windows are secured. I survived a horrible relationship, and this is not over in my opinion. They also need a plan for a safe house they can get to, which the ex knows nothing about, in case he starts to stalk them.